Mariposa, California is a census-designated place in Mariposa County, California. It is also the county seat of Mariposa County, which at the time was the largest county in California. Over 2,000 people call Mariposa their home, and the town has an overall area of just under 13 square miles. At 1,949 feet above sea level, Mariposa is much higher than the other places that we've shown you in the last few weeks, and it took us up into the mountains beside Yosemite National Park, where the creek fire was still burning over a month after it had started. Mariposa takes its name from the Spanish name for butterfly, named this because of the monarchs that would spend the winter in town. Pine and oak trees are scattered everywhere in Mariposa, giving it a beautiful appearance both from the ground and from the air. Europeans and early Americans were first attracted to Mariposa because of the gold. Today, there are still mines in Mariposa, where gems are gathered and sold in town. The town was founded as a mining camp on the banks of a seasonal stream known as Aqua Fria. The original town site was located about six miles to the west of where Mariposa is today. After some fires and a flood during the winter of 1849 and 1850, the town was moved to the location of today's Mariposa. Since it has better terrain and because of the presence of the Mariposa Creek, a large producer of placer gold. The gold in small Aqua Fria Creek was soon removed and lacked water most of the year, so the people left the old site and moved to the new location. A large mine soon opened with a 40-foot water wheel that would crush gold ore. This gave everyone in the community a job, and Mariposa soon became the supply hub for hundreds of outlying mining districts. Placer gold, that which is found in creek beds and alluvial deposits, was soon extinguished, and the era of hard rock deep mining began. In 1851, Mariposa became the county seat for Mariposa County which at the time was the largest county in California, and in 1854, the courthouse opened. The white judicial building created with wood from nearby forests is the oldest courthouse still in use in California. Cases are still tried there to this day. The courthouse is so recognizable that you can find it on the Mariposa County Seal. The courthouse's clock tower and bell chimes every hour, 24 hours a day, seven days a week. While it began as the state's largest county, territory that was once part of Mariposa ceded over time to form all or part of 12 other counties, including all of Merced, Madera, Fresno, Tulare, Kings, and Kern counties, and part of San Benito, Mono, Inyo, San Bernardino, and Los Angeles. The county and the city took its name from Mariposa Creek which was named by the Spanish explorers in 1806 when they discovered a great cluster of butterflies in the foothills of the Sierra Nevada. Each year, the first weekend in May, residents mark the annual arrival of migrating monarch butterflies with the Butterfly Days Festival and Parade. The Mariposa Butterfly Festival is a family event that seeks to educate as well as honor the life of their namesake, the butterfly. Anyone from in or out of town is invited to celebrate the butterfly along with its beautiful downtown scene with shopping, music, and the release of butterflies for all who attend to enjoy. One thing that stands out about Mariposa, both the city and the county, is that there isn't a single traffic light in sight, nor is there any official cities with all of the towns labeled as census designated places or unincorporated communities in the county. Mariposa's history is plated in gold, but there's more to the town than just the ore it was founded on. Today, Mariposa has a very vibrant community that takes a lot of pride in every aspect of the place that they live. Although its history, both locally and all over California, is its largest selling point, you have Yosemite National Park, which is less than an hour drive from Mariposa and serves as a big part of what brings people to the city.
In addition to Yosemite, Mariposa has plenty of its own great selling points too. One of the highlights is definitely the restaurants in town, and you can't start a day in any better way than at the Sugar Pine Cafe. Good morning, I'm Susan Posey, and I'm the owner of the Sugar Pine Cafe here in Mariposa, California. A little history about our cafe, or about me in the cafe, as I used to come in here as a kid. Uh, aunt, uh, raised in Merced and had an aunt and uncle that um, lived up on the river, so we were through here a lot. Moved away from Merced, lived in the Bay Area for a long time, back east, back and forth, um, and thought I'd retire up here. And the uh, realtor said, guess what's for sale? <laughs> so my nephew for a while was my partner and we totally gutted the building out and put it back to the way I remembered it as a kid. And the cafe was built originally in 1946 as the Dairydale Soda Fountain. And it became the Sugar Pine in 1974. So it's been here for a long time. We serve here a lot of baked goods and American foods. Everything is made in-house. We don't use any mixes. So we make all our own, handmade, our hamburgers are hand formed. Um, we have this special here is kind of a fall special where we take our morning glory muffins and make an apple compote and make it into a French toast. And he's done a, a kind of a, a pizza here with flat bread. And this is kind of a Greek pizza. <laughs> we usually do a burger special every day. But I think one of the best stories I heard from one of our old timers here is her and her girlfriend were in having a soda and here came in this, this uh, convertible came pulling in and it was Alan Ladd and his wife. And right after that another convertible pulled in and it was the nanny with the kids. <laughs> and I thought, thought that was a pretty fun story about it. Also operating out of the Sugar Pine Cafe until their own restaurant opens up is the Little Shop of Ramen, which was Violet's favorite meal on the entire trip. Hi, I'm Melissa Takahashi from Little Shop of Ramen. And I'm Travis Medlock, uh, co-owner of Little Shop of Ramen. Uh, also, uh, the local grape as well, which is a um, wine-centric uh, wine bar, bottle shop, specializing in Sarah Foothill uh, wines. And Little Shopper Ramen is a house-made ramen shop here in Mariposa, California. Little Shop of Ramen is a pop-up restaurant in the Sugar Pine Cafe that serves some of the best tasting ramen you've ever had. A lot of love goes into these bowls and preparing them, and when you walk in, you can smell the broth that just warms you up for the ramen coming your way. With only fresh ingredients, you can really taste the quality here. And with the next closest ramen restaurant being all the way down in Fresno, customers wait all week for the days this little shop is open to feed their hungry bellies. Violet loved her ramen meal, and she couldn't get enough of it. Eventually, the Little Shop of Ramen will have its own restaurant in a new location, and you'll be able to get your ramen fix in the mountains all week long. After all the eating you'll do in town, nothing will set you straight better than a trip to the gym, which Mountain Fitness has covered for you right across the street from Sugar Pine Cafe. I'm Layla Meadows. I'm manager here at Mountain Fitness Mariposa. Um, we are a uh, mostly lifting gym, uh, owned and managed by women, which is different. Um, we kind of try to create an all-inclusive um, environment where everybody's welcome, nobody feels uncomfortable. Um, we have 
cardio equipment, we've got free weights, we've got machines, um, we have several personal trainers. We also include a few classes at the moment. Um, typically we're 24 hours. Right now we are open from 11 a.m. or 4 a.m. to 11 p.m. Um, due to COVID. Uh, we are going through all of the steps to keep everybody safe, make sure we can keep our gym open for our members. One of the historic attractions you can see in Mariposa is the county's old stone jail on Bullion Street. What you will find is a single floor jail house constructed in 1858 during the mining era. The jail house is made of granite stones quarried from nearby Mormon Bar. You can walk around the jail house and view its exterior architecture, but it's not open for public visitation, so no visits inside unfortunately. A short history is provided in front of the historic building. You can conveniently combine a visit here with the historic cathedral and the country courthouse, both of which are also located on Bullion Street. We got to spend more days in Mariposa than anywhere else on our trip. And the time there paid off because we really got a good taste for the city and got to see a lot of things in town and live a few days in the life of someone who calls it home. This was only made possible because of Carol Dewey and after shooting the last three cities over the course of 48 hours, saying we were drained is a nice way of putting how exhausted we were, but once we saw where we'd be staying the next four days, a giant sense of relief washed over us. Here at the Wisteria Arbor Suites, you can enjoy a very relaxing stay, and we sure did. The living room is cute and cozy, and Carol did an amazing job with the decor. The kitchen is adorable and the vintage tin ceiling is mesmerizing. The bedroom and bathroom are spacious and tidy, and it's very easy for this place to become your home away from home. Hi everybody, I, my name is uh, Carol Dewey and I'm originally from the Bay Area but I settled in Mariposa back in 1986 I want to say. Built my home and raised my two daughters here. Uh, I now own this place called Wisteria Arbors. It has six residential spots in it and then four units that I offer through Airbnb.com. It's been a great place to own. I've become a part of this Mariposa community. It's been fun fixing this place up and making it beautiful for, for our community. I'm sure if you come and visit here, you'll notice that downtown Mariposa is absolutely incredible, like nothing you've ever seen. We still have some of our buildings from the 1800s that are here standing and looking beautiful. And the community has been created into something that like, the next generation, the millennials, have moved in now, taken over spaces, and opened up great little shops, little coffee shops and, and whatnot shops and wine tasting bars, and it's just become a really fun community, not only for those of us who live here, but also for the tourists that come to town. So, and we welcome tourists. Doggone, you're our mainstay, that's for sure. We love having you here. We're on the way to Yosemite which everyone knows is the crown jewel of our national park system. And uh, we love to have visitors come through. So, as I said, 
my place, Wisteria Arbor's Arbor Suites, was built in uh, 1938, 39. So it is truly the oldest motel in Mariposa County. Uh, others may claim they are, but we truly are. So um, it's morphed over time, become residential, and then slowly has been coming, turning back into a motel. It's in the heart of downtown Mariposa, and everything that we have to enjoy here in Mariposa is extremely accessible. You can walk just two blocks, three blocks, and find the History Museum, and find wonderful places to eat, wonderful places to explore, to shop, and Yosemite is merely an hour away, up the River Canyon, the beautiful Merced River Canyon, into our national park. Adding to our feeling of exhaustion was the fact that although it had gotten better over the last month, the air quality was still not the best due to the creek fire burning not too far away. The smoke would come and go and be heavier on some days than it was on others. In 2017, a fire forced Mariposa to evacuate the entire town. And for residents who live up in the mountains, fires are just a part of their normal lives and how they know the holidays are right around the corner. While in Mariposa, outside of its famed courthouse, we met with a firefighter scientist who explains how fires such as the Creek Fire, which is the second worst fire in the recorded history of California, can actually be prevented by getting so out of control by doing something called controlled burns. Uh, hi, my name is Mark Garrett. I work for the University of California Cooperative Extension here in Mariposa, California, as a fire educator. I also work as a contractor for Yosemite National Park on wildfires as a resource advisor and a fire archaeologist. My position here in Mariposa involves fire education, so that means uh, I'm going to work with private landowners as well as state and federal agencies in Mariposa County, um, Tuolumne, Fresno, Madera, and Merced counties. And what we're trying to do for the University of California is bring together landowners um, to see if we can get prescribed fire on their property. So right now about 40 percent of California is in the hands of private landowners. So we have a huge wildfire pro uh, problem right now and uh, the way we need to figure out how to defeat that problem is to realize that fire is a natural part of uh, the ecosystem here in the Sierra Nevada. So uh, if we rely on federal and state agencies to manage their land, uh, what do we do about the private landowners? They're pretty much left up to themselves to manage their own lands. So we're trying to educate people on how to do prescribed burning on their own property. Because for the past century, 150 years, we've excluded fire on the landscape in California and the West. Um, and that's led to the accumulation of unnatural amounts of fuel, our trees and shrubs and litter and duff and everything that makes these wildfires so catastrophic. So what we need to do is get back to the natural fire regime as if nature intended. So for the Sierra Nevada, it would be approximately every 30 years, depending if you go up or down in elevation, it might be different. But, um, you know, we've, we've kept out fires for over a century, as I've said, and, and that's just led to these destructive wildfires wiping out communities. So a place in the wildland urban interface like Mariposa, where you have the whole town and then people living surrounded by nature, uh, it is very dangerous for fire. So you have to confront that, you have to deal with that, and you have to realize that fire is a natural part of the ecosystem. So we hold workshops educating folks about prescribed fire, and we help them to implement that, getting them um, acquainted with the resources that are available to them. Also bringing the community together, like in a prescribed burn association, where you have a group of folks coming together. Some folks might have the resources, other folks might have the knowledge, and then we can come together on your property and, and get fire on that landscape. So. We typically do prescribed burning in the spring and the fall when it's safer, when you have weather behind you or in front of you to help, uh, you know, put that fire out because there's a lot of fear around fire. Um, you know, it's not really socially acceptable, you know. So 
Back in the old days, even in Mariposa, there used to be rangeland associations and cattlemen associations where folks would burn on their land every year. And for agriculture, that's really good, you know, it brings new growth, it gets rid of invasive species, so it really helps their landscape. So we're just trying to create healthy landscapes, whether it's in the forest, um, or whether it's on somebody's ranch land, or just a, a private landowner who's worried about uh, wildfire coming in and burning their home down. Mark's wife also spoke to us outside the courthouse about the city of Mariposa and how it has helped her mental state and how she spreads that positive energy to other people as well. Hi, my name is Rowena Lubo and um, I'm resident here in Mariposa since 2012. And I'm from the UK and uh, now find myself living full time here by Yosemite and uh, I was actually working as a former aerospace designer tech that's actually local here uh, for uh, aerospace manufacturing uh, that specialize in transducers and now my career transitioned as a health, health engineer coach. I'm here because uh, primarily my husband you know uh, was uh, offered a um, uh, park ranger position uh, from uh, San Diego. We were based in San Diego and uh, and he was offered his first breakthrough here to work in Yosemite and uh, as a resource, natural resource. And as for me being the wife, I, you know, I work primarily in design technology uh, consultant and coming here was quite scary because of a small town. It's pretty much out there and I wasn't sure if there was any kind of offer, um, job position. But primarily the thing that motivated me to come and stay here in Mariposa is because of the, um, the lifestyle that it offers. And my, we've been an advocate for healthy lifestyle. And I realized that um, in order for me to um, be in the workplace and really show up fully and perform my best, I also appreciated how being outdoors and recreating really helped men my mental health uh, and my main, um, primarily my brain and mood health. And so, uh, and coming here just kind of enhanced the experience even more. And uh, historically, I was one of those young graduate back in the day, in my mid-twenties, who experienced burnout in the workplace. And, um, and the benefit of balancing you know, work and lifestyle really took me into a, a journey of, of what does actually look like for me uh, to maintain that health and the outdoor basically the, the actual wilderness space gave me that uh, sanctuary, that peace of mind. When the fires aren't turning California into ash, the Yosemite National Park and the mountains up here in general are a popular vacation spot and normally the cities are even busier than they were when we saw them. One great way to remember your experience in town is by stopping by Mariposa shirts and stuff to get some custom made gear made for you on the spot. Hi, my name is Teresa. I'm the store manager of Mariposa Shirts and Stuff, located in Mariposa, California. Um, we are a custom design store. So how it works here is you pick out the shirt you want, you pick out one of these numerous designs, and we'll go ahead and put it on the shirt for you. We also offer hoodies, hats, um, cups, plates, you name it, we are more than happy to do it. You can bring in your own designs and you can also bring in family photos, whatever you like. We're always up for a challenge.
You can't visit Mariposa without going to its star attraction, the Mariposa Museum, where you get a real taste of the story of Mariposa and the wild, wild west. Once you arrive at the museum, you can get a real taste of the past, as many of the old equipment used in the mines are preserved outside before you even take a foot inside the doors. Inside the museum, you follow a path that takes you on a tour through Mariposa's history, both as a town and also of the history of the gold Mariposa was founded on. You can find out a lot about Mariposa here, and also California in general, since it was the gold rush that brought so many people to this great state in the first place. Founded in 1957, the Mariposa Museum and History Center houses a large array of exhibits interpreting Native American, Spanish Settlement, California Gold Rush, Yosemite, and Mariposa County history. The World Class Vault contains a large archive of photographs, special collections, and Mariposa County records. With over 100 exhibits, the museum stands out as one of the most visually attractive and also informative museums that you'll ever see. Open seven days a week, all year long, it's a must-see in Mariposa. Admissions cost only $5, and children under 12, first responders, and anyone with an active military ID gets in free. The Five Stamp Mill is one of the few stamp mills in California Gold Country that is still operational. It is frequently run for group tours. The original Gazette building is on the museum grounds, 
Originally a pre-Civil War temperance hall, the Gazette building housed the Mariposa Gazette newspaper for more than 70 years. The original press and print shop are displayed and are operational. We have this actually set up with um, basically um, an engraving of newspaper that was published in 1865, mm -hmm. in April of 1865, if you get that date, Lincoln. Right. Okay. And so I explained to the kids how it's used, that all of this type would have come from one of these trays, mm -hmm. and they're puzzled by the whole concept. <laughs> and then I showed them how it would be printed. So there's a um, lever. Lever, thank you, over there. <laughs> Which you turn, this goes underneath here. This is cast iron. This is um, pressed down like that. And it's printed, then it's rolled out, paper is taken out, and you print the next one. Oh. So you can see how tedious it would be. It's yeah. better than handwriting. Amongst the native plant garden on the museum grounds, visit the Amacha, a traditional Miwok Native American dwelling. Next to the Amacha are grinding holes that were used to grind acorns for food. The Miwok exhibit contains a large collection of baskets, artifacts, and images that represent local Miwok heritage and culture. The Southern Sierra Miwok once inhabited much of the area known as Mariposa County. Hi, I'm Miranda Fendel. I'm the curator director here at the Mariposa Museum and History Center. Here we house a collection of history representing Native American, Spanish, early California, and Gold Rush history. We have a special collection, and as you can see here in our vault, we have county historical documents dating back to 1850, as well as a special Native American basket collection that we're working on here today. The Mariposa Museum and History Center was founded in 1957 and was originally located in downtown Mariposa. And the grounds were donated in 1971. One of its primary uh, benefactors was a founding member by the name of Henry Dalton. And a large part of our collection here is from the Dalton family. Each year we have over 2,000 school students here visiting on field trips and along with tourists on our way, their way to Yosemite to learn more about the history there. Mariposa County also represents Yosemite Valley history, so we have a collection of original artifacts and then we have original documents uh, written by some of the more notorious founding people for Yosemite National Park including a document signed by Ulysses S. Grant dedicating Yosemite as a state park, and documents from Galen Clark as well as John Muir and other well-known figures. After our trip to the museum, we were ready to eat again, and this time at the 1850 restaurant, but not before we stopped by the brewery, where we learned the story how their beer was made and became a real focal point of their business. Uh, so my name is Jake Wackerman. Um, I am co-owner co with my wife of 1850 Brewing Company and restaurant. So the brewery started as a, as a hobby, really. It wasn't uh, uh, something that I, I I mean, I was hoping to make it a business someday, but it was something that I just, I really enjoyed doing. Um, and then uh, it, then we started seriously talking about a restaurant, brewery, um, all that crazy stuff. Uh, we were going to a, a baseball game and uh, I had the wild idea of pitching it to my, 
soon soon be well, hopeful wife. I hadn't proposed her yet, but I just told her, you know, these, this was my dream someday, and she uh, didn't, you know, look at me like a crazy person, and that's when I really knew that I definitely had a partner for life that was going to be with me through, you know, anything, and she uh, she believed in the idea, believed in the what my, my passion, and uh, so we started, um, you know, next day looking at stuff and where, where the where where the company could grow and where we could do it and my hometown seemed like the the best place for it and uh, and we started looking for property and started the the restaurant first because the food was most important to us um, and then once we got the, the food going solid and my my recipes on a small scale kind of honed then we went to the the brewing which was uh, more than a full time job. Um, in a little 20 by 20 garage that we uh, converted into a little brew house and brewing 50 gallon batches at a time, uh, feeding just the restaurant and, and some friends' bars. Uh, and then we slowly started gaining bigger equipment and and growing the, the recipes had to grow, everything had to grow. And now we're on the a seven barrel system, which I can, I can put out 14 kegs at a time. So it's crazy to think of when I was doing almost a keg and a half of beer, you know, maybe two kegs on the, on the little system. Uh, now we're at a, a scale that I, I barely have enough kegs to do one batch. Now I have to buy kegs. So we're, we're constantly, the growing, is, it's, a, it's a great problem to have, um, especially in this situation with, with COVID and everything being so so strange right now. But we're, uh, we're reinvesting in the, in the business and all of our, all of our money from the restaurant and brewing is going back into the brewery. We we have you know, crazy goals, and we're we're hoping to get into some distilling eventually someday. Um, we we never say no to a to a great crazy idea. My wife and I constantly um, back and forth of where where the business can go and grow, and uh, we're definitely investing in beer and booze because that is something that will never go out of style and if the restaurant has some slow winners which it does the hopefully the beer and the alcohol will will cover that so. now that we saw the beer brewing it was time to go try some of it and try some of the delicious food that's made at the 1850 restaurant my name is hannah wackerman and i own 1850 restaurant and brewing company with my husband jake here in her um, so Jake and I opened 1850 Restaurant in 2013. We moved from the Central Coast where we met down there. Um, he managed a restaurant across the street from the same restaurant that I worked at. Um, so we met and it was always Jake's dream to open a restaurant. So he talked me into moving to Mariposa and opening 1850. So we took over this building on April 1st and opened for a grand opening on March 1st, 2000, or excuse me, May 1st, 2013. We did a 30-day renovation. Um, Jake's brother and dad and my dad and family all helped us turn the salmon-colored walls into the gray walls you see in there now and took out the, the purple carpet that was in there. So it definitely was in need of a facelift. Um, but we've learned a lot in the last seven years. I would say we've survived a government shutdown, the Rim Fire, the Detweiler Fire, closures of Yosemite National Park. I mean, anything you can think of, we've survived. And now here we are in the middle of a pandemic. So here we are surviving some more. So it's been a, an interesting journey so far. And we joke and say we're gonna write a book someday that is titled, you're not gonna believe this shit. <laughs> um, but it's been fun. It's been a journey. In 2017, we opened the brewery. So it's been a cool addition to the restaurant space. Um, adding in hops and barley and grain and learning the process has been a fun challenge. My husband Jake went to UC Davis um, crash brewing course uh, where he learned most of the basics there and then the rest has just been trial and error much like the rest of our lives and this adventure has been so far um, but it's been a great ride so far.
For our last stop in town, we swung by the local farmer's market where vendors set up shop to sell their crafts. I'm living on the edge of the timeless. Living on the edge of the timeless. There's no past. No future. Only now. Okay, get over here. When you're living Lucky. on the edge of like the timeless, <laughs> our time in Mariposa was truly special and gave us an opportunity to learn about the city, the gold rush, and come to know things about the state we'd lived in our whole lives that we had no idea about prior to coming. Even though things have changed a lot since the town first formed, it did a great job preserving its history, and the town is still a magical stop along the way to or from Yosemite, and from its historic downtown to its museum to its restaurants, it truly shines brighter than gold. Thank you. 